And so if my brother doesn't do it and we both get Easter baskets come Easter, I'm like, but I, I, I can't be like, right. well, I, I gave something up for 40 days. He didn't do anything. I couldn't drink. So I couldn't eat candy and he ate is, all the candy. I said it as an adult. Are you still speaking as a child? No. <laughs> <laughs> I love Easter baskets. Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. I am Spencer Gardner. And I am Crow. And this here is Frank with a bucket hat looking fine. Bucket head. Bucket head looking real good today. It's Cinco de Mayo. It's Cinco de Mayo. Do you know what Cinco de Mayo celebrates? It celebrates the 5th of May in Spanish. <laughs> Do you know what Cinco de Mayo in Mexico means? I'm going to, I must have learned it so many times, but I'm just, unfortunately I have to guess and I'm going to say Independence Day. Yeah, they they won their, their independence from a country. Okay. That's about as much as we know. All we know is we are here to celebrate for Cinco de Mayo. Great day to be alive. Beautiful day out. Uh, beautiful May weather. Um, May weather. Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> we're, celebra- we're celebrating Floyd Mayweather. We're celebrating Floyd Mayweather every day of May, as long as the weather is nice. Um, if you didn't check out our yesterday's podcast, we had another Bible bracket. It's round two, starting yeah. today. Mm-hmm. Uh, so check out our Instagram, at Croak and Crow, for that. And um, every single day for the next 33, nope, for the next 16 days, yeah. we will be uh, in the second round. Uh, see which book reigns supreme if you will yep but anything else i got an ultrasound today why uh you know they're checking out my gallbladder making sure it's all running all gallbladdery <laughs> but i i felt what it was like to be a woman oh right yeah and how did you kind of like liked it well ultrasounds are not just for women well no obviously but i got you'll one. always hear of it when the it, most common yeah. thing you, you hear is if a they're checking for a baby but right. um i got it for a medical reason and I'm sure a ton of people get it for medical reasons, men and women. So and they use like like a joystick outside of your body with yeah. some with some conducting gel to move yeah. so it slides across your body. Yeah. So my thing, whenever you see it on like the television, I always imagine it to be like cold and invasive. Yeah. But it was kind of warm and nice. It was just like. <laughs> A massaging gun just going over my abdomen. Yeah, you were like, try here. Try I, here. I was like, and like the, the table they had was so soft. Oh my I God. I literally was like, I'm going to fall asleep. I feel bad for you that the, the medical um, procedure was your most like spa the, moment. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was like that was what got me away from the the pains of life. But yeah, I was like, can I just like pay you per hour and just like fall asleep as they're checking no, my organs thank you. out? I don't like it. All right, well. Everyone has their thing. Yeah. Which is weird, though, because I don't like massages, as you know. Yeah. Because <laughs> I feel like I don't want to be, like, be pushed and prodded. Right, right. But just like a little like... That's funny. Warm <laughs> warm ultrasound. Well... I'll take that. I should open a massage parlor. It's like the ultrasound massage. A Christian mas- massage parlor. Just keep telling the doctor you have um, problems in different parts. And yeah. So that <laughs> it's like, all right, we're done. It's like, check the left. Unfortunately, you know, they could find something. And you're like... <laughs> Well, it's a win-win. True. Well, yeah, you know, not unfortunately. All, all, when you get a massage, it's like you don't get to learn about anything. Right. This is like, all right, you're all done with your and ultrasound you're still massage. Empty. You also <laughs> have um, three stones. weeks to live. No, Spencer. <laughs> it's well, National Day of Prayer. Oh, I feel like it's National Day of Prayer a lot. Good. Uh, yeah, I'm, it should be National Every Day of Prayer. It's well, I don't. There, there probably are different organizations national days of prayer maybe yeah. that's what you're thinking of um this one i don't know who started who, who's in charge or behind it all but it's the first thursday in may oh okay nice so it wouldn't always be may 5th well hey if you don't already pray start praying it's easy mm-hmm. i think that's what a lot of people don't understand yeah they make it harder than it has to be yeah i should say you know like uh it's it's funny it's like a conversation with anyone you ever talk to guys who don't know how to talk to girls and it's like well, have i <laughs> and then you're then they're talking to you and they're like i i just don't know what, to, what do you, I, I just go right. up there like, well, i don't know what to say i don't yeah. have any pickup lines and, and then you think in your head you're like pick up lines just go and it's, a, it's another person have a conversation yeah just have a have, just start talking be yourself yeah pick up lines just the, the just even the word is pretty obnoxious isn't yeah it? yeah exactly it's like that's another human because that's your motivation can yeah. i can you talk to me without needing to pick Ex- me up, ex- exactly know? and so 
weird comparison, but with God, it's just have a conversation. Just right. be yourself. Say what's on your mind. Right. Be thankful for what you're thankful for. And um, just yeah, ha- and also, open up that line of communication. So, you know, don't feel pressure to be so righteous either because people forget that prayer can also be a complaint. Yeah, it can be a complaint. And people also forget what if you do pray for complaints that it's uh, for both for yourself and for your relationship with God. Uh, just to pray for things you're thankful for, like, or if you have nothing to say, like you, you can just, just, like I said, open up that line of conversation. It's between yourself. It's good for you, both you yeah. and your spiritual relationship with God. National Prayer Day. Get on to it. Yeah, pray. I used to think the sign of the cross was um, a telephone call to oh. God. Oh, like punching in the buttons. Yeah, <gasps> and um, I love that. Here's the problem with it. Beep, beep, beep. Yeah. And it was like that. Cause, and I, one, I like to think about it because it's like, then he's not hearing all my thoughts outside of the phone oh, call. Oh, now you're allowed to. Yeah. It's like, welcome. you know, when you, when, but you know, when you uh, hang up the phone, you start talking about someone yeah. and you're like, am I still on the phone? No, I've never done that. <laughs> <laughs> well, be, when I thought it so long. Then I thought, what if I've accidentally like missed one or did it twice oh right the sign on the cross i mean or like you're in the shower and god's like yeah and you're like no, oh no it, like so <laughs> so basically like when i start praying i had messed up earlier right so i, I hang up the phone because i hang up the phone and then when i'm done praying i call and then from then until i do it again is when i'm on the phone call oh you know what i mean yeah you following yeah i'm following <laughs> And so that's a constant fear, fear of mine. And then what? one was a fear? I would like do it twice to like catch up. I'm like, what if now I just mess it up? Oh my gosh. I think this requires a little therapy. <laughs> Might be a little something else going on. Well, um, um, you, yeah. to, 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 to bless yourself, it is forehead in the name of the father. Yes. Um, top of the chest. Sternum. You go all the way down. No, this, this is the sternum. I thought it was up here. That's the sternum. The you're pointing the sternum. It looks like you're pointing down. Right here. Okay. It's like uh, in between your chest. Somewhere in that area. It's like your heart, if the heart was in the middle. In that neighborhood. Yeah, maybe. In the uh, name of the Father, end of the Son. And then you're going to split Holy Spirit to your two shoulders. Holy, Holy well, I, Spirit. Well, it's kind of like your, uh, the in between of your shoulder. Again, and your interesting. I always thought it was shoulder. But yeah, you're right. I don't go that far. No. Holy Spirit. Um, Holy. Uh, so yeah, the word holy being your left side. Spirit being your right. Yeah. Hands together. Amen. Some people do a little kiss. People do kiss. They 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 point up to point the up, sky. You know, if you just did a big or they if you're wearing a crucifix, touchdown. they 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 kiss the crucifix. Um, a few years ago, I learned an extra little way to say it, and I like it. And it is in the name of the Father who created me, the Son who redeemed me, the Holy Spirit who sanctifies me. Amen. Mm, if you want to throw a little pizzazz, a little on extra it, something. Why not? Why not make it a little fancy? Well, that's cool. Yeah, National Prayer Day. We love prayers. Um, if anyone wants us to, us to pray for them, we will. We take prayer requests and we also give out if you don't know how, if you literally don't know any prayers and you don't feel comfortable going a la carte, <laughs> saying it off the, whatever it's called off the top of your head, um, we can give you an easy prayer to say. We'll give you an easy prayer to say. Yeah, or just come to one of our Walk Through Thursdays. Hear your Bible verse and we'll tell you and use that. Yeah, you got you got yourself a new prayer here in the Bible verse. It sounded like you said here in the Bible verse. Here a Bible verse. Here in the Bible verse. Uh, like the metaverse. I, I feel like I'm a rapper right now. Oh, you look like one. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> what would your rap name be? It would be um, Queen Crokina. That sounds like coke co- co- cocaina. Yeah. Um. What is that stuff? In Saint Augustine. It's. It's the shells that make up the cement, that make up the walls, uh, that make up the fortress. I, I, like, I don't know the name. It's like it's like that, cocaine. But you're saying cocaine or whatever, right? Yeah. Spanish because of um, Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but no, this is um, some kind of cement mixture, mortar mixture yeah. made from crushed shells. Yeah. Yeah. That's a name. Yeah. I'm not sure about it. it. Sounds like that. But yeah, so Cinco de Mayo. What what do what does one do on Cinco de Mayo? They. Um, Ask what is this about? <laughs> That's a nice thing about Cinco de Mayo. You know what? Maybe I am just naive to this, but I feel like we we do know that Cinco de Mayo is the not Mexican Independence Day. Which it is, I was wrong. I, I I learned about it. It was the victory over the French Empire at the Battle of Puebla. Okay. And um, 
But which in which in a way was which is good probably contributed to their independence. But why I like it is because I feel like nowadays especially everyone likes to remind you about well, you know what this holiday is actually like I feel like Mexican or Cinco de Mayo is just such a fun holiday. It's, it's, it's so a, it's colorful. A, it's lighthearted, but it's like yeah. colorful and Music. you're happy. You go out, you hear yeah. songs, you eat, eat some some uh, Mexican food. Mm-hmm. And I, I like that. I feel like it's a laid back holiday yeah. where you don't have to be like, well, what have you done to commemorate Mexican right. victory over the French? It's like, we're, all, we're we are happy. We're all together just enjoying the day. We are heading towards Spencer's birthday. Heading towards my birthday fast. It is six days away. Man, I'm thinking about taking a trip. <laughs> I might go to Zimbabwe. Why don't you go to Mexico? Uh, well, and get some leftovers. Leftovers from uh, Cinco de, de Mayo. Mayo. They might yeah. be a little old by then. So you're, do you know what your what your date is called in Spanish? Um. Oh, elf. Oh wait. No. No, that's German. Once de Mayo. Oh. Once de Mayo. Happy Once de Mayo. I always, uh, you know, it's like, you know, uh, Spanglish, when a Spanish person learns English. So I've taken like five years of Spanish and I've taken like eight years of German. And so I have a very weird combination when I'm trying to use another language where I'll mix Spanish and German up together, which I think there's very few people probably out there that would be able to differentiate what I'm saying. I like it though. I like the mix. Yeah. Use a Spanish number and then a German subject That's noun. Funny. That's funny. <laughs> but guys, um, it is Thursday. It's my favorite day of the week. Um, great Thursday to be alive. Single to Mayo, all that. First but Thursday. The first Thursday. First Friday. Will that be tomorrow or was there? Yeah, that'll be tomorrow because mm-hmm. the first Friday, I know a lot of things happen. Yeah. I got like the art. It's our big art day, I think. Especially now, nice weather. And, yeah, and that... COVID's over. Yeah, right. It's like That's time to bring the mm-hmm. galleries back. But, um, more importantly, over here at Croak and Crow, besides that, we do a fun little thing every Thursday, no matter what month, which is called Walk Through Thursday. Thursday. Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun, because Walk Through Wednesday just begun. What is going on, fellas and ladies and boys? It is Walk Through Thursday, the greatest day on this side of the mis- greatest day between Wednesday and Friday. It's the greatest day <laughs> between Wednesday and Friday. What we do on Walk Through Thursday is we open up the Bible like we do every week. Bible is open. Once the Bible is open, we scan through it. Same way we do every day on our Instagram polls. Yeah. Shout out. We find a verse and we talk about it a little mm-hmm. deeper. Um, it's good. It's, I, I, th- I think it's, it's a fun little practice we do. We get to, we as Christians, we know what the Bible tells us to do. Yeah. What it doesn't tell us to do, we summarize it. We put it into a one big boiling pot and we're like, I know the Bible. Yeah. I don't never really read it. We're all not here to then read you the entire Bible because that's a lot. But why not just get little bits and pieces of it? Yeah. Before you know it, you've, you've learned a ton of new verses and you've dove into them than you have ever before. Right. So one verse little snippet and we just talk about it we get all the good stuff out of it uh sentence by sentence uh line by line <laughs> uh word by word yep uh letter by letter and um we just have fun with it it's laid back it's chill grab your laid popcorn laid back laid back um yeah so let's just get into it we are reading today without paper without we are going paperless um we've been getting complaints that we hate the environment which that is a falsehood. We that love, is a falsehood. We love the environment. So we are reading from Two Chronicles. Um, do you remember who, Two Chronicles? That made it to the second round. I think it did. Yeah, it made it to the second round uh, of our Instagram polls. Shout out. Um, so we are reading Two Chronicles thirty eighteen to nineteen. Thirty eight. Thirty. Thirty. Book dash, uh, chapter thirty. Or thirty colon eighteen dash nineteen. Okay. Um, we are going to cut halfway through 18. Okay. We'll go back and we'll talk about, um, what is the setup for it, but it goes something like this. May the Lord who is good pardon everyone who sets their heart on seeking God, the Lord, the God of their ancestors, even if they are not clean according to the rules of the sanctuary. Okay. 
Now, before we get into that, I want to tell you a little bit about the earlier of 18. So there was these people who came, um, traveled from all these different cities. Mm -hmm. And I think they were hungry or something. And Hezekiah, I don't know if you remember Hezekiah. It's hard for me to remember them all. Um, he was there and he prayed or sorry, it was, uh, it was Passover. Okay. There is things that you need to do to set yourself up for Passover. Okay. Um, both women and men, like depending and it's like to rituals and yeah. it's to purify yourself okay. so that you can participate in Passover. The people who just came did not purify themselves. Okay. So they did not follow the rules. Okay. And Hezekiah prayed for them and said, contrary to what was so they ate they ate the food and was like um even though they weren't supposed to okay. by by what was the biblical rules at okay the time. all right that's when hezekiah gave the prayer and said may the lord who is good pardon everyone who sets their heart on seeking god okay. the lord the, the god of their ancestors even if they are not clean according to the rules of the sanctuary okay so that's a little backstory um anything you want to say to get started um, this is Old Testament or New this Testament? This is Old Testament. So that's very interesting to me because um, I'm always learning so... I'm all, I'm always learning to like the Old Testament more than I just did without a lot of information. Yeah. With a little bit of information, you often see... Uh, you often only look at the New Testament and then you kind of, in a way, is like, oh, that's the Old Testament. Right. Uh, you disregard it. It's like, right. oh, that's from the Old Testament. Yeah. And it's because Jesus did come in a way and say, um, follow me. You know, you don't follow uh, all of these old laws. But there's a reason it's, it's part of the Bible. And it, it has it all of the themes. And that's what we always talk about overarching themes. Mm -hmm. It's not like they only started in the New Testament. They were there. There was a lot of, you know, there's a lot of other mm -hmm. stuff to like you find it inside of. But and, um, oh, the, you know, it's funny. There was a Bible verse that I wanted to, uh, that I was thinking about using today, but it was a little short, but I'm, I'm going to read it now because um, I think it has to do with that. Okay. Yeah, because people even say, oh, the Old Testament God, you yeah. know, it's to sort of tell people that's the judgmental God, that's the unforgiving God, and that Jesus was so merciful and forgiving. Obviously, they're the same they're the same entity. And I like when I read from the Old Testament and I find um, the merciful God in the Old Testament. Yes. So Hebrews 13.8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Okay. Um, it's a short little verse. Obviously, that is New Testament because it's talking about Jesus. But uh, we believe Jesus as God. And I think an important distinction to make is God has always been the same. God has always been, um, you know, unconditional love. Right. And sometimes we might let ourselves think about the Old Testament as an angry God. Or, right. And, and it was like, that's why I like that verse. And people will use that verse from Jesus till now. Right. But I use it from before. You know what right. I mean? Like, I, I, I use it as was always. There, there's no, right. there's not a, a, a character arc of God. It, right. He's always the epitome of love yep. and uh, and um, forgiveness and understanding, even in the Old Testament. Right. So that's the first thing that struck me that, um, what, Old Testament? Uh, yeah. There was, you know, uh, mercifulness towards not following the rules exactly. Yes. So as far as the actual verse goes, um, may the Lord who is good pardon everyone who sets their heart on seeking God, the Lord, the God of their ancestors. Right. Um, with that, I, I think another thing that I, I like from that is these people were people that were from other places. Right. And, um, it's, I, I like the pardon everyone who, who is searching or has their hearts open yes. to this God. And I don't even think that necessarily means yeah, back in the, it was, at least we were all Jewish people of like other Jewish people. It was anyone who was, who was looking up. To the higher power. To the creator, yeah. Because uh, the God of their ancestors, like, our belief is that there is one God and everyone on earth that is the God of our ancestors, whether you call him by name or not. Right. And so anyone who sets their heart and seeks out for that, 
is to uh, you're, you're praying to be pardoned right to be received uh, in, in his eyes yeah and just exactly what we started out by saying which was that there's we we think of like merciful jesus and old testament vengeful god and, yeah. and then you just explained like no it's it's one and it's yeah been that way the whole time and then i feel like it's picked up in this verse because it's saying um the the lord the god of their ancestors so yeah. when we're reading it in 2022 you know it's it's our ancestors you know the, the, yeah. like this is the god and and it's inviting this old testament god into your into your christian 2022 heart yeah and saying that the mercy was always there. Always there yeah. and with everyone. This and with is, everyone. This is verse is specific, uh, specifically talking about people from that are coming from cities far away. Right. And it's like there is no one group of of that, you know, God's not there for. There's not one time period of, of him being one way. Or, it's all eternal and inclusive. Right. Um. Even if... All right, so this is... yeah. Uh, Pardon them, dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Even if they're not clean according to the rules of the sanctuary. Now, this is the interesting part. This because is the interesting part that we still have trouble with in 2022. That we still have trouble with um, in 2022 is the idea that they are not following the rules. And, and uh, Hezekiah is saying, forgive them, even though they didn't follow the, the rules. And there is such a, a comfort in that because we... You, you see this multiple times. Like I, you saw it with David when he brought his hungry men into the tent to eat uh, oh, right. food when they were starving. Yes, and especially when you see it with Jesus, where he what was it? He didn't wash his feet before he came in, and then we we talk about it with Jesus right. as if that was the first time right. a, a new standard was set. But this these little snippets from the Old Testament show you that this was always. And I, 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 this was an unconditionally loving God that was right. Even when you don't do what is exactly correct by the book, um, that's okay. Like you, you have that conversation with God, and it's okay. Right. And more than that, I think is the idea that what's more important, right? Like them to you know, celebrate Passover by eating and stuff is a celebration. You know of God, it's a spiritual celebration, and so it's kind of showing that it doesn't matter so much. Right. It doesn't matter so much that they didn't do the nitty gritty rules. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's there. Why should we turn them away from celebrating Passover? Right. We shouldn't. Now, um, the question is: If I don't have to follow the rules, if that's what it's saying, and, and I can still be welcome to the table. Um, is it is it unkind or is it judgmental towards the people who are following the rules? How do I put this? It in Spanish German. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't unkind, but that is up for the people who are following the rules. It's up to them to not hold any animosity in their hearts or any judgment in their hearts. Okay. You see it with Jesus and the um the parable about the grape farmers and or the the yeah, the grape farmers where the guy goes out um to get servants to harvest grapes. Okay. He gets the first one and he's like, "Can you work from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Mm-hmm. and I'll give you a hundred dollars making these numbers up yeah the guy's like yeah i'll do that that's fair and i agree three hours later he found a guy can you work for uh, can you work now from 11 a.m to 8 p.m for a hundred dollars so yeah sure i'll do that finds another guy you know five hours later four four p.m he's like can you work four p.m to eight p.m four hours for a hundred dollars he said yeah i'll do that the other people are like why am i doing the same amount of work for when when he gets to do it for the same amount of pay, and it's like, right? Well, you agreed to it, and you right. were happy. You were right. happy to, to. It was fair, and you, yeah. It, it was fair, and that parable needs to be distinguished from taking advantage. Like, yeah. it's not like you have an. Uh, it wasn't meant to be like you have a boss who was like, "Well, I was trying to." No, I was, uh, no. It, it, it's just the it's just Id- illustrative. It's the idea that, um, in your own heart, 
you can't be looking around and saying, well, they're not doing, I, I've been, I spent my entire life doing this spiritually. And, right. and that person can't go to heaven because he didn't do everything I did. And right. It's like, that's, that's not following the path that was set before us of unconditional love right. and not judging and being happy for those around you. Like, right. A true person with goodness in their heart may, and I have to go back and look at this story in full, but Hezekiah, I imagine, did all of the, right. um, the Passover preparations. Yes. Was he like, well, I don't want to let them in because they didn't do the preparations and I did. I had to, I had to fast for a week or whatever it was. No, he wanted to bring them in. Right. And then he spoke to God and he asked, like, as like, can you let these people in? There, there wasn't that. Well, you didn't do it, so sorry. Yeah. And and where does your motivation lie? Yeah. You know, so if your motivation is, I hate doing these preparations and I wish I didn't have to, mm. whatever it is, like you said, I think they they have to like clean the whole kitchen and yeah. wrap things in foil and do certain things. Um, if you're doing it and you hate to do it and you're just doing it because you think it's the only way to find favor with God, then your motivation is already wrong. Yeah. But if you enjoy doing the rules of the sanctuary and you yeah. you enjoy t- doing these things taking your time men- mentally you know right. fasting for yourself and right. not because you're being forced to right and it's bringing you joy yeah. to do these things um you know in honor of god uh, keep doing them yeah and and the people who aren't doing them that is their choice as much as it was your choice to to wrap everything yeah but they you know don't if you uh, if you then feel better than them you, what are you doing yeah um that that's a, big, that's a big thing and you see it a lot in spirituality about rules and practices we sometimes lose sight of what they're meant for right and then we do them for the wrong reasons which defeats the purpose right so like look at lent um lent started out as you know 40 days of um sacrifice uh in honor of jesus's sacrifice yeah and then you had easter at the end which was a celebration right that uh, some people might be doing it because it's like oh i have to give something up maybe like their family your kid and your family your mom's like oh you have to give something up yeah you lose the idea. So if it was for me, I like giving. I like to do as something. as an adult. Who can, I like yeah. to do something as Lent because it's like my own little like. It, it makes me feel good, feel closer to God to give something up. And so if my brother doesn't do it, and we both get Easter baskets come Easter, I'm like, but I I I can't be like, right. well, I, I gave something up for forty days. He didn't do anything. I couldn't drink. So I couldn't eat candy, and he ate is, all the candy. I said it as an adult. Are you still speaking as a child? No. <laughs> uh, I love Easter baskets. <laughs> and so, with my view now, where it's like, is Lent f- inherently fun? No. Am I doing it because I want to? Yeah. Right. And so who am I to turn and say, well, you didn't do Lent, so you can't have Easter. Right. That's not that's not why I was doing Lent. I wasn't doing it because it was like, right. well, I did it and you didn't. So I did it for me. Right. And a lot of and a lot of these spiritual practices, you need to like go back and find the root of why do you do it? Like, do you hate going go going to church every day? Well, then you're doing the wrong thing. Like right. the point of church is not well, you like you, like you have a, a punch card you know like right. you gotta hit this many times go to heaven if you're going to church it, it should be because you want to get closer to god right. like you want these things the host at the eucharist at, at church is just a piece of unleavened bread unless you're using it as something to th- make you think about right. like yeah. jesus your and, and god what your intention is and that's a lot of what these i, I feel like these sanctuary rules are right and they need to be remembered as that so both people that don't do them we need to invite them still in and say of course you can be part of yeah this spiritual family and for those who do it do it because it's what right helps you grow as a spiritual person yeah um mother's day is on sunday mother's day is on sunday and you know if you're going to do something for a a mother figure in your life you know if you're doing it like resentfully or out of obligation or like yeah hi here you know why are you doing it yeah you know but if you're doing it because it brings you joy and um and you're hoping to bring them joy. I think it's all about intention. It's all about intention. It's the word of the day. But guys, that is it for Walk Through Thursday. Hope you enjoyed it. Go to the Instagram polls. They're starting today. So if you missed the first round, leg round, whatever you want to call it, get up, us on the second. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow for Dr. Seuss Friday. It's going to be a brand new book. So be there for that. Until then, uh, go have a fun single to Mayo. Peace. <laughs> I want to